For the past two years, the University of Pretoria Laptop Orchestra, UPLOG, has been exploring new modes of communication through the use of online collaborative performance tools. What you are hearing and seeing on screen is an excerpt from an UPLOG performance streamed on YouTube earlier in this year. My name is Mel and I'm a live coder, sound engineer and network music performer. I'm also the manager of Uplog and a member of the transcontinental network ensemble known as Supercontinent. In this presentation, I will discuss our activities as an ensemble over the course of the past two years. In addition, I present some of the lessons we have learned in navigating the contemporary performance art that is live coding. I hope that you will find this presentation informative with regards to the communicative capabilities of technologies that we use. If you'd like to find out more about how to get involved in live coding performance, feel free to get in touch. Who is Uplog and what exactly do we do? A moment ago, you may have heard me mention the terms laptop orchestra, network ensemble and live coding. These three terms describe what we do and how we do it, but may be best understood by means of a demonstration. Let me show you. On the screen right now are six blocks, each of which is occupied by a member of Uplog. This of course can be changed depending on the size of the ensemble. Uplog currently has six members located across various parts of Southern Africa. We meet twice weekly for rehearsals and workshops via the online platform you see here, known as Estuary. Accessible through the browser, all a performer requires is a physical device able to connect to the internet. In most cases, although not exclusively, ensembles make use of laptops since the platform provides visual feedback for the performer and the audience. The term laptop orchestra was first introduced by Princeton's laptop orchestra, Plork and is used to denote the organizational structure of a particular ensemble of performers. Plork, similar to a traditional string orchestra, organizes itself into the hierarchical structure of conductor-performer. This is further enhanced through providing each performer with a self-contained station equipped with a hemispherical speaker, a laptop and of course a conductor at the helm. A Plork, like many other laptop orchestras, intended to perform on the live concert stage. However, due to the pandemic, we needed to find new ways to perform collaboratively. Thus began our transition towards establishing ourselves as a networked live coding laptop orchestra. Ensemble communication, a vital aspect of collaborative performance, becomes quite challenging in the context of network music performance, where members are not physically located in the same room. As an ensemble, our task was to explore new modes of communication, starting with live coding. Live coding involves a real-time improvisation and composition, or comprovisation, of computer code. This is what is being typed on screen right now. Applock and Supercontinent are two of the many ensembles that use Minitidal, a live coding environment that enables the user to manipulate pre-recorded samples in real time. In this article, I mentioned tidal cycles. However, um, it should be noted that these are very similar and one is just a shortened version of the other. Our second mode of ensemble communication takes place during and after rehearsals and performances. A typical exchange involves discussing live coding strategies for rehearsals, or sometimes during a performance someone has to communicate to other members that they are experiencing technical difficulties. As I discuss in the text of this article, one of our primary issues involves dealing with what Uplock now refers to as glitching. This is, in most cases, an unwanted effect that can be reduced by making minor alterations to the code. Communicating this information allows the members of Uplock, to some extent, to maintain awareness of this glitching effect. In addition to using Estuary and Minitidal, Uplock has a dedicated Discord server, which has proven useful in various situations. Using Discord's voice channel capability during a previous performance helped me to coordinate everyone in areas I felt needed attention. Due to limited time, all the material 
for this particular performance was prepared by me and was compiled for each individual member of the ensemble. Up Workshops, a term I use to refer to the series of workshops I host for incoming members of Uplock, forms an integral part in developing the communicative competencies of those new members. These are held alongside weekly rehearsals and, for the time being, one performance per semester. These three related activities, workshops, rehearsals and concert performances, form part of Uplock's performance cycles. Workshops and rehearsals are structured in such a way so as to prepare all members of the ensemble for the next performance. A typical workshop will be structured into two parts. The first part will generally consist of prepared content presented to the members of the ensemble. The second part is dedicated to reinforcing some of the concepts discussed in the workshop. As an extra means of communication, I compile weekly up workshop documents which I disseminate to the members. In these documents, I often include tasks and or tutorial videos that may assist members. Some Uplock shops often involve instructional videos where I discuss a chosen topic and dissect it from a technical point of view. Rehearsals follow a similar structure in that they are an hour long. The first 30 minutes is dedicated to an improvised live coding jam. The second half of the session is dedicated to a post-rehearsal discussion on the events that just transpired. Last but certainly not least, we spend quite a bit of time preparing for upcoming performances. Uplog joined its first online event in December 2020. After this performance and a second one held on 24 June this year, we decided to host our first solo event. During the preparation phase of this event, we felt we needed to re-examine how we planned and executed our performances. While these performances each had several interesting moments, at times it became challenging to hear ourselves. It was clear that we needed to incorporate a wider range of sampled sounds. Additionally, we sought to include more rhythmic harmonic and melodic material. As the coordinator of the ensemble, I decided to compile a new strategy that would best suit our current situation. Subsequently, I distributed a package of tutorial content to the members of Uplock. Each member received a specialized package of content. In this, I described multiple strategies on how to express various musical elements using tidal cycles or many tidal functions. Some useful strategies have emerged from planning our second performance cycle. First, I explicitly list each action that needs to be performed in a step-by-step -step or sequential manner. Instructions are provided, asking the performer to make small changes in addition to computing their code more often. In an attempt to incorporate a wider range of musical phrasing, Uplock turned to two applicable mini title functions, the struct and up functions. These enabled us to incorporate rhythmic and harmonic transformations in combination with our chosen sound palette for the performance. These documents are accessible from a dedicated GitHub repository. To access this information, follow the prompts on screen. An additional document is distributed to the members of Uplock in the form of a cheat sheet. This has been a useful tool for Uplock, especially for the beginning live coder. Taking a quick glance at the sheets often prompts ideas for improvising, and also acts as a quick reference guide for some essential title functions. With the wide range of functions that Minitidal offers, I have noticed that novices tend to struggle to memorize all the functionalities of the environment. This cheat sheet was compiled to assist members with this problem. An essential advantage of working with Minitidal is that users are, usually within a short amount of time, able to compose complex combinations of tidal cycles or mini-tidal functions. 
More often than not, these function combinations produce equally complex musical material. For that, essential functional programming knowledge has become of great importance when it comes to understanding the behavior of a particular function. For example, when examining a function such as struct, one can deduce that it accepts a Boolean pattern, true or false values, expressed in binary numbers, zeros and ones. Struct, therefore, is useful compiling rhythmic patterns with mini title code by simply assigning a pattern of binary numbers to a struct function as follows. Studying and analyzing tidal cycles functions in terms of their behavior and construction has stimulated a greater understanding of the environment and what is musically possible within the constraints we have set for ourselves. Design constraints are essential for defining the limitation of musical expression. And while developing an understanding of the technology Uplook uses to perform, I would argue that the most important aspect of our preparation is owed to a combination of these two perspectives. An additional problem we have yet to address is the manner in which we express our musical ideas. This is an avenue I feel needs to be explored further in my research. Combining our collective experience and knowledge from a variety of fields in musicology, such as composition, performance, technology and education, is our greatest advantage. With this combination, we aim to further develop and cultivate our identity as an ensemble in the process of experimentation, exploration and presentation of ourselves in the form of live streamed YouTube content. For this project to be truly considered collaborative, where participants are equally responsible for making decisions, more invested time is needed from our members. Controlling and performing musical gestures in this purely instructional manner becomes problematic in that control over the musical output can only be performed in a memorized and sequential manner. In conclusion, as a principal researcher of the dissertation titled Establishing a Laptop Orchestra in South Africa, an emic-centered inquiry into computer music performance, I aim to further understand the interactions between myself and other network musicians I encounter. In the process of writing this article and presenting this work, I have had an opportunity to reflect on the work I have completed thus far. As a member of the live coded and network music communities, I have been able to reach some initial assumptions about my work. At the time of writing, my current research examines whether and to which extent a novice live coder is able to develop a musical identity as a network music performer within a predetermined set of constraints. This study will be conducted with my own progress as a live coding performer in mind and as such is presented from an insider's perspective. Through interaction, communication, observation and experimentation, Uplock is closer to establishing a distinct musical identity. An identity that, in my view, is in constant flux. Similar to the exploration of the musical possibilities of new modes of communication, such as these we encounter with mini title and estuary, Uplock is constantly redefined through the development of our individual identities as performers of network music. While predetermined musical parameters and technological constraints may limit the possibilities of musical expression, the musical decisions and actions of members of an ensemble should not. The question, does technology facilitate or constrain creativity, remains unanswered at this time. I hope my forthcoming research will provide more information that extends to a more complete answer of this question. We intend to extend and expand on the practices we have developed thus far, with particular attention to restoring performer agency through increased engagement and development as live coding musicians. Thank you for taking the time to attend this presentation. We have reached that point in the presentation where the floor is now open for questions.